New Pew Research study shows that now more than ever, more young adults, Gen Z and Gen Y, are needing financial support from their parents. So what in the world is going on here, right? Is Gen Z being lazy? Are the boomers being greedy? Should, you know, these old parents be helping out? What's going on here? Well, first off, let's check out the facts, right? What is actually going on here? Well, in this study, we find that 59% of parents still financially support their young adult children. What is a young adult children? Let me tell you. That is someone who is 18, which, you know, fair enough, through 35 years old. If you are 35 years old, you are not a young adult children. <laughs> you are not a young, you're not, there's no children for 35, okay? You know, that's fair. <laughs> Continuing on, right, under the age of 25 years old, 57% still live with their parents, which is up from the 53% we saw in 1993. Now, obviously, why is this, right? Well, first of all, one of the main reasons they say in this article is that it's taking longer for adults to reach milestones, such as owning their own home, getting married, having kids, right? Not 35-year-old kids. But frankly, I think, you know, the rates of people actually doing some of these things it's not exactly happening, all right? So, and then something else we have to talk about is that there's a massive wealth gap, which this should not surprise you, okay? There's a massive wealth gap between the boomers and the millennials, the Gen Ys, okay? And, I, and I'll show you this chart on the screen so you know what I'm talking about. This is essentially all the wealth in America. Gen Z, okay? Let's, let's make this very clear. We're not even on the map yet, okay? You see that? There's no part on the chart where Gen Z is there. So, you know, maybe it's okay for us to get a little help. And what's really crazy here is that even the silent generation, okay? And what is the silent generation? <clears throat> Anyone between the ages of 79 and 94, those people have more money than the millennials who are, are out there working. It's crazy. <laughs> and so we have this case study example of, you know, sort of see what's going on here. We have these two 39 year olds who are living in New York, not the, not the state, but quite literally New York City. One is a director of design. The other is a high school teacher. You'll see, actually, no, we're not, we're not showing them because some people are being a little mean. We don't want to be mean. <laughs> okay, so what, what happened here, right? So they needed parental assistance to buy in New York City. Wait, wait, wait. they live in New York City. Why in the world are we living in New York City? So, so here's where I'm going to sort of break in a little bit, right? You know, we have to sort of balance out doing the right thing and needing help, okay? Because I'm not saying it's wrong to need help, but you're 32, you're two 39 year olds, so you're not, you're not kids. You're, I mean, you're almost halfway through your life at 39, right? You're almost, you know, I'm not trying to be mean, but you're, you're getting up there, <laughs> you know? And so why are we living in New York City? Are, are, are there no high school teacher jobs anywhere else? Really? <laughs> uh, so that was crazy. So what actually ends up happening here? Well, they tell us, they say, they said in a quote, we could pay a mortgage, but that down payment was the absolute crusher. So maybe don't live there, okay? <laughs> Crazy idea. The idea of trying to save up on our own as long as we were paying rents in New York would have taken 300 years. Like I'm saying, maybe don't live in New York City, one of the most desirable places in the world to live, the capital of the world. And I, I know some people on the right are saying, oh, well, New York is garbage, what's like? Tell that to the prices, okay? The, the, the prices disagree with you. <laughs> so, I mean, what are we getting at here? What, what they're trying to say is that 38% of home buyers under the age of 30 receive help with their down payment from their parents, okay? And already, you know, I'm trying to make this distinction very clear. If you're 24, 25, 23, 21, if you're Gen Z, you probably need a little help. You know, you probably need help when your generation is not on the wealth chart. Millennials, you guys are, you don't have as much excuses, okay? So so let's go into some of the reactions here because we have a lot of older people tapping in, presumably, and they're not very happy. They're, they're, they're kind of expressing their opinions here. So one guy here in response to this article, oh boy, let's get into it. He says, I think it is a big mistake to give free money to adults that refuse to grow up. Once you are 21 to 22 years old, you should act and behave like an adult. Work hard to earn money. Free money is not appreciated, usually wasted in non-essential items. I would not object to a child coming home to eat if he was in such bad financial shape. People that built this country started from zero, earned a better living with hard work. We are creating a generation that feels entitled to everything. Entitled. 
do you honest to God, do you honestly think that these two, this couple living in New York, do you think that they felt entitled to a, to a down payment? Like the, the assistance to, of the down payment? Do you think they actually felt entitled to that? I don't think so. I, I think they were probably struggling and their parents helped out a little bit, okay? And then, I mean, I, first of all, I, you know, I'm not saying they're perfect. I, I think they're incredibly stupid to live in New York City. I, I don't think they can afford to do that. <laughs> I think they have to move to a lower cost of living area. But to sit here and act like they're, they're the most entitled people on the planet, like, uh, that's, that's, that's a little much, right? And so, you know, something else I want to add on here is that he's saying once you are 21, 22 years old, you should act and behave like an adult. Who... What 21-year-old, what 22-year-old in the history of humanity has just figured it out? They got to figure it out. And I don't want to hear these people say, oh, back in my... No, no. You at 21 years old were not perfect. You at 22 years old were not perfect. You didn't figure out the meaning of life and, and how to successfully climb the corporate ladder, you, you didn't have it figured out at 22, okay? That, that is, but that's okay, right? I think at that age, it's very reasonable for a lot of learning to happen, for a lot of maturity to happen, okay? Frankly, who's to say that just because you're, you know, 61, 62, that you got to figure it out either? Maybe you don't. <laughs> so anyways, right, you know, like I'm trying to say here, adulthood is, is a spectrum, okay? It is not a binary, you're either perfect or you're perfectly imperfect perfectly imperfect you have nothing figured out but you get what i'm saying it's a spectrum you slowly learn okay how to be better and you know when we have to take a step back right let's, let's say that this commenter actually has a ton of money and he wants you're he's considering right he's considering giving it to his kids what else are you going to do with that money what are you going to do with it what are you going to do with it right you're just going to sit there and then put it in like you're just going to get like donated when you die or something, right? Like, I, I don't understand what the point is. We'll talk about that later. And, and also, this guy seems to be very opinionated, right? He thinks that he understands the rules of life and how to, how to be happy. When you have money to give to your kids, you literally get to decide the rules. So if you're so confident in your incentive structure, why not leverage your money to instill certain values into your children. This is mind boggling. This is so contradictory. Well, frankly, and thankfully, thankfully, not everyone was feeling this way. There were a lot of people, a lot of these older people who actually are more on page with what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> we have this one commenter who says, I hope to be in a position to help my kids purchase their first home someday. I don't see anything wrong with that. So to whoever wrote that, I, I think you're a little bit more in touch here than the other commenter and you know not to mention right we're in this age where a lot it's so easy to pick on gen z it's so easy when you see gen z in the title of a video this video another video a lot of people are heading into it saying what can we pick on gen z for next why not in the face of that leverage your funds to create the right incentive structures for them to do what you believe is correct what was the point of making all that money? And so, I mean, something else, right? I mean, something else that I, I want to talk about here is that according to the study, and I fully believe this, it's actually a win-win for both parties when the young adult actually stays with the parents, right? So what are the benefits here? Well, the benefits are pretty obvious for the young adults. Very clear, right? You say, okay, you get to save money and that's it, right? Well, let's go see what they had to say, right? So they report on average a stronger personal financial situation. You know, I'd say it's pretty good. Stronger relationship with their parents. Also, it's pretty good. <clears throat> and their sense of independence and in social life, which you would expect to just crumble, it remains neutral. And then what's even crazier on top of this, right, is that the parents themselves find a benefit out of this. These wealthy parents, like the, the first commenter, right, they actually find it's overwhelmingly positive. They report on average having a significantly stronger relationship with their child and a neutral impact on their personal financial situation. Meaning that they don't feel anything. They don't feel the economic brunt of the sort of costs of having their young adult child, hopefully not 35, but their young adult child staying with them and financially supporting them. They're not feeling that burden. 
Now, do am I trying to say here that you should just throw money at your 38 year old who's not working and just kind of slacking? No, no. But I'm saying be, be, be a little compassionate, right? We can be a little compassionate. We can try to leverage these funds to try to instill the right values. We can do that, right? Right? <laughs> And a matter of fact, and this is this part was really interesting to me, right? But more respondents of these, uh, not young, these old wealthy adults, right? More said that they are in a better financial, personal financial situation, which was 27%, than those who said they're worse off, which was 18%, which, you know, it's a little hard to wonder why that actually is. But if I had to take a guess, my guess is that they're probably just happier off. It doesn't cost any money to just put their... 22 year old in that extra room that they've always been staying in because let's be let's be honest right let's say you're worth five million dollars at the age of 60 okay are you really going to rent out a room in that nice big suburban house you have you're not going to you don't need to okay <laughs> let's be honest here okay um so yeah i mean that, that's very clear so i mean what are what are the big takeaways here what do we take away from this you know the whole, not goal, I should say, but what a lot of people strive to do is they try to create this big pile of wealth, right? And typically, if you know, you should know this, right? It typically happens through businesses, owning stocks, and owning real estate, okay? This is fundamental stuff. And then once you have that, once you've accomplished that, right? What is the point of life? You have to be very honest and ask yourself this question. Are you making more money just to have a couple extra brunches into your 70s right is that what you want to do are you trying to just add a couple zeros to that end of your net worth is that going to make you happy and in my personal in my personal opinion from the people that i know after a certain amount of money right like past like however many six figures or whatever right after I, I do believe that money can buy happiness but past a certain point i do believe happiness is very much tied to having strong relationships with your friends and family. It is the happiest people I know who also just so happen to have really good relationships with their friends and family, right? And like we're trying to say here, who's to say that having this money can't actually help make that happen, okay? And, and you know, we've talked about generational wealth and, and all this, and um, you know, obviously these are just my opinions, but at the end of the day, and, I'm, and I wanna make this very, very clear, right? You might be in a position where you say, you know what, screw you, Jake. Having these brunches makes me really happy. Okay, go ahead. Right? Like I'm not, tell I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. My phone ran out of storage, but let me just finish off what I'm trying to get at here. The, the big answer here, okay, is that there is no correct answer on how to spend that money. And the correct answer is whatever is going to make you happy. And you are the only person who can answer that.